I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, MailTag. MailTag is a Chrome extension that allows you to track your emails in real time for free. It also lets you track other cool things like link clicks, email reopens, and even the device that was used to open your emails. Be sure to check out MailTag by clicking the link in the description below. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to deploy an Angular application to Firebase. Okay, so you can have Firebase host your application. And you can do this with Angular 4 or 5, it doesn't matter. We're going to be using the client panel application from my Udemy Angular 4 front to back course. Alright, so right now I just have it running locally. I'm going to go ahead and stop that with Control C. And let's clear this out. Now, I would suggest if you're on Windows, don't use Git Bash because you're going to run into issues with selection when you have to use the arrow keys to select an option. It wouldn't work for me, so that's why I'm using the standard Windows command prompt. Um, you shouldn't have any issues in any other operating system. So what we want to do is go to our Firebase. Oh, let me just get out of this. So you want to go to your Firebase console and you just want to select the project. So client panel and we're going to select hosting get started and then it's going to tell us to install the firebase tools which is the cli that is used to initialize the app and deploy the app so let's install that globally with npm install dash g firebase dash tools okay and once that's done what we want to do is do firebase login and that's going to uh, pull up our, our Google accounts. If you have more than one, you'll be able to select the account and uh, we'll be able to authenticate. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say yes here. All right, so I'm going to choose the account that I use to create the database with and we're going to say allow. So Firebase CLI login successful. All right, so next thing we want to do is initialize the app with Firebase init. This will create a couple of JSON files. Uh, let's go ahead and clear this out actually, and then we'll say Firebase init. And yes, and this is where uh, Git Bash wouldn't work for me. So we're going to choose database because I am using the real time database with this application. Uh, if you're not, then you don't need to choose that. We also want to choose hosting. Okay, if you're using Firestore, Functions, or Storage, you want to choose those as well. All right, so let's see. I actually already have, oh, here we go. So we want to select the default Firebase project, and you may want to make sure you select the correct one, minus the client panel. Uh, what files should be used for database rules? The default is fine. Now, here, what we want to use for our public directory. When you use the CLI to compile your Angular project, it's going to put it into a folder called dist by default. Okay, You can change this in the settings, but by default it's going to be dist, and that's what we're using. So that's what I'm going to put here, D-I-S-T. Uh, configure as a single page application, yes, and enter. All right, so Firebase initialize complete. Um, now what we want to do before we deploy you want to make sure you compile your application for production. So you can see um, I have a disk folder already, but I'm going to actually delete that and recompile. So let's clear this out and we say ng build dash dash prod. Okay, that will recreate the disk folder for us. All right, so now what we want to do is Firebase deploy. And hopefully this works. Deploy complete. All right, so it gives us our URL. So I believe we can do Firebase uh, open hosting colon site. And we get site not found. Oh, there we go. All right, so we are now deployed. Let's go ahead and try and log in. Now, if I look at my back end in Firebase and go to authentication, you can see I have a user brad at gmail.com. Let's go ahead and do that. And password. And there we go. 
So we are now deployed to this domain. Now you can add a custom domain if you go to hosting. And right here you can say connect domain. You can put in your domain, verify your ownership, um, and then that'll be connected. I'm not going to go through that. But that's it. Our application has been deployed in just a couple minutes. All right, just check around here. I guess we could um, try and add a client, make sure that that works. So let's say Harry Smith. And submit and new client added. There he is, Harry Smith. Okay, we can edit him. Let's change him to Harry Jackson. Submit. Everything's working. Let's delete him. Good. Client deleted, client updated. Settings. All right, so everything's working. We have a deployed application. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, this helped. If you're interested in building this application, I'll put the link to the Udemy course with a, a promo code in the description. And it doesn't matter if you use Angular 4 or 5, and the, the entire course will be updated to Angular 5 very soon within the next couple weeks or so. All right, so thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. So I just want to give another shout out to MailTag who sponsored this video. MailTag is a free Chrome browser extension that allows you to track your emails in real time. I've been using it myself for about a week now and I can't recommend it enough. On top of email tracking, MailTag has a bunch of other features like desktop push notifications that alert you when your emails have been opened, link click tracking that shows if people have actually clicked on the links in your email, and a ton of other cool features. Again, all these features are completely free. Be sure to check out MailTag and click that link in the description.